for me, the most memorable part of Aoyuan is this yellow rock artificial mountain. In the last video, I talked about Su Dao Ping Tan, a musical and oral performance art form and a national intangible cultural heritage. In this video, let us look at a tangible cultural heritage and a world cultural heritage at that, the couple's retreat garden, aka Ouyuan. It is one of the classical gardens of Sudo and one that is located in the Pingjiang Road Historic District. Compared to some of its comrades in the vicinity, such as the Lion Grove Garden or the Humble Administrator's Garden, Ouyuan is smaller and less well known, though well worth a visit if schedule permits. I won't be able to cover everything about Ouyuan, but here are a couple highlights about the couple's retreat garden. The first thing I recall from my last visit is the imposing Jiashan Rockery or artificial mountain built from yellow borders, a rare choice in Jiashan material. One side of the mountain plunges into the pond, the other side is a verdant, gentle slope, between which is a snaking path flanked by precipitous cliffs intentionally positioned to block your view. After rounding a couple corners, a whole new scenery emerges like a landscape painting unrolling in front of your eyes. For me, the most memorable part of Ouyuan is this yellow rock artificial mountain. It is one of the biggest of its kind. Uh, I don't know what's the scientific name of this kind of uh, yellow stone, but a pile of this rock of this scale is a rarity in Suzhou. Uh, this yellow rock jiashan is meant to act as a companion to complement the other side uh, jiashan, uh, built from the obviously different Taihu stone. That before is a gold mountain. This here is a silver mountain, and of course we have clear water and green mountain too. Harmony between human and nature realized within this garden, and harmony and equality between women and men as well. The character O in Aoyuan means two people cultivating their land together, and is a homophone with O, meaning couple, alluding to a couple retreating to the countryside and living in seclusion, as manifested in this antithetical couplet outside the study of the lady of the house. The structural layout also abides by this theme, exemplified in the pair of complementary jia shan. However, I should point out that paired complementariness isn't symmetricalness. Unlike the general pursuit of symmetry in Western, Islamic, and other gardens, classical Chinese landscaping is distinguished for asymmetrical composition that imitates nature. As noted centuries ago by the likes of the architect William Chambers, painter Jean-Denis Yatire, and especially by Sir William Temple, who coined the term Sharawagi to denote this style. Some scholars explain that asymmetry in landscape gardening embodies the naturalist approach in Taoism, while precise symmetry, which we Chinese do employ broadly but more often in urban planning and architecture, represents etiquette in Confucianism, two systems central to the Chinese civilization. Again, both are contained in a Chinese garden, symbolizing harmony between nature and human. These are just some aspects of Chinese garden and some facets of the couple's retreat garden. Tons more to explore and appreciate. Gratitude goes out to Suzhou garden professional Selena, who helped compile lots of info here. I'll share some of those in the description section and follow up with a one minute walkthrough video. So we're back near the entrance slash exit at the Zai Jiu Tang Wine Carriage Hall. So let's wrap up our visit to this unique garden and grab ourselves some wine. If you're a wine drinker, hit that like. Those of you familiar with Chinese cuisine might be thinking yellow wine, but it's a bit too early to party and a bit too hot for that level of alcohol. Let us imbibe something else instead, sweet rice wine. And there happens to be a wine cellar nearby that specializes in what we seek. Sweet rice wine is known as Jiu Niang among many other names because it is consumed in many parts of China. Jiu Niang is translated as sweet rice wine because it really is sweet and contains a modicum of rice wine. The sweetness and alcohol come from partially fermented grains, typically sticky rice, though this shop Yi Pin Su would give us some old Jiu Niang to try, a small but eye-opening bonus. Fermentation is stopped before all the grains turn into alcohol and some grains do remain. Think of this as must in winemaking or maybe mash plus wort in brewing. Jiu Niang comprises grains suspended in a sugary liquid with noticeable solids. That's why Jiu Niang can be consumed both as a food and as a drink. So this is Jiu Niang. Um, it's uh, eaten throughout the year, but um, dishes might vary a bit depending on the season. Uh, for instance, in autumn, it's often served with uh, sweet osmanthus, a very autumn flower because it blooms only for a short period 
um, usually around October and November. Uh, in winter, um, Junyang is often used in the broth for, uh, with the sticky rice balls and uh, eaten hot. Uh, in spring, it is used to make uh, Junyang bean uh, with the Junyang uh, worked into the dough. And um, Junyang is actually um, not just like sugar water. It has um, some of that acid remaining from the partial fermentation process, which is why it's an effective thirst quencher. Some instance here is served chilled and with uh, mung bean, a naturally cool ingredient according to traditional Chinese medicine philosophy. It's incredibly refreshing. Not for the same reason, it's used as a seasoning uh, in the broth for Hongzhen Da Rou Mian. Um, it's a cup of noodles that features a big slab of fatty pork and the uh, acidity, the tanginess from the jiu niang uh, keep the broth from being too heavy. Um, it's usually only available in the summer. So maybe I'll do uh, a, a video on the government soon. So stay tuned. 再见.